Hello guys, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. My name is Miles. Today we're gonna be talking about oops. Today we're gonna be talking about the newest Ensley Rain Cosmetics eyeshadow palette. It's called Cold Moon, and this brand is a lot of stuff going around it. So I think I want to touch on a few things before going into the proper try on and um, yes it's my first time trying this i have just watched these to play with them and i tried one shade only but i never applied you know never made a full look with this so we're gonna be trying this together but i wanted to touch on a few things uh, that are related to this brand because i feel like it's necessary so if you don't want to hear any of this please feel free to skip ahead we are gonna be playing with the palette anyways i work in marketing so i um work directly with a lot of brands and i know that some terms and some things may not be so easy to understand if you are not working in this field. So this brand, Ensley Rain Cosmetics, has been accused of private labeling, private labeling their products. Private labeling means that you are basically making a manufacturer produce your product and that they have formulas that they can only use for your products. That's why it's private, right? And is private labeling bad per se? No, it's not. There are a lot of brands that do this for example, uh, Chanel, I think I also read about Lisa Eldridge doing this. It's pretty common. If you're a brand, you were probably don't own a makeup laboratory or a manufacturing um, industry. If you do, well, that's great for you because you can cut costs. Think about Colourpop. Why can they be so cheap? And, um, you know, their makeup is still fairly good. It's because they have... they create their own products and I think the same is for L'Oreal and a few other brands. Don't quote me on L'Oreal, I'm not 100% sure. So private labeling is not bad per se, um, but I think there's been some misunderstanding. They made an announcement recently on their Instagram and they said that they have switched from a private label uh, type of deal to manufacture just having deals with a manufacturer which is basically the same thing they are private labeling their products so i think that what has happened is they have switched from a white label type of model to a private label type of model and this is important because a white label means that everybody can have the same formulas and multiple brands probably are distributing the same formulas at different price points based on their branding and stuff like that now what is my experience with this I don't condemn private labeling. I think, you know, you gotta start somewhere and not everybody wants to, you know, have a laboratory, but they want to probably create products, want to have their own ideas born and created into something concrete. Like, that's a dream. I think I, I would like that too. Uh, but there are a few problems and there are a few issues with this brand that I found uh, in my own experience with them so i'm gonna list them to you first of all they have a pre-order type of business model which means that when they come out with a new collection when they launch something you are basically pre-ordering them even though they are not telling you that you are pre-ordering them and why is that because you can see on their website even right now if you go at least at this time um when i'm filming this if you go to the website, it says that they have a 15 to 20 days processing time. What does that mean? Like, I don't believe that a brand needs two weeks to pack up products and to ship them. I think that's crazy to think, to think about. It's not, it's not that. It cannot be that. It cannot physically be that they have so many orders and they are so behind them that they have two weeks, they need two weeks to ship them. I think that's crazy, I don't think that's... Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe they do, you know what? Maybe it's just the owner and her husband and I don't know, they're just packaging products, but even if in that case, I don't think you need two weeks, at least if you want to offer a good customer service. So what is happening? It's simply that they haven't... They are selling you a palette that hasn't been made yet to talk about. So they need 15 to 20 days for their manufacturer to produce them and to for it to arrive at their doorstep, at their business venue, whatever it is. So they are not selling it, selling you their stock. They are pre-ordering. They are making you pre-order. So here comes another issue. So why is it if you have a 
pre-order business model why is it that when you launch collections stuff sells out if you don't have stocks like in your warehouse in your house wherever if you don't have stocks you don't have a limited number of products that people can purchase you are just ordering them collecting orders for your manufacturer why is it that stuff sells out I think there are two reasons for that. One, it's a marketing technique, you know, FOMO, create FOMO. Their stuff sells out in a few hours and then people have to pre-order. And secondly, I think it's because like they send a limited number of requests to their manufacturer, like 5,000 pallets, and then they stop there, close it for a bit so that the manufacturer can catch up because if they didn't close orders they would probably keep you know coming in and the manufacturer would have no way like it it, it would be slow pretty slow of a, of a process what i found out by ordering Enslayer in cosmetics is that from a purely business standpoint they do not have business risks they their business is completely safe there is no way for them to have stock that is left and isn't and that isn't selling there's no way for them to have issues because they even have insurance insurance systems um for their deliveries that is a third party you they have they offer root protection which is a another brand another business uh, that takes care of this stuff which means if you don't add this root protection to your order they take no responsibility for what happened to your package if it gets lost if it gets broken in transit so they have zero risks they pre-order products which means they know that the the single pallet that they get from their manufacturer is going to be sold because it has already been sold they do not have risks regarding the shipping because there is a third party handling the shipping um the shipping issues and that stuff they just are getting the cash <laughs> and even at that they i think like they have a specific amount in mind when it comes to sales like they want this palette to um profit them a certain amount like i don't know maybe like 40 dollars 50 dollars and that's exactly what they will get because their discount codes and even you know the welcome discount codes is enough only to cover the shipping costs because yes they are making you pay for the shipping which other companies usually don't or at least they have um, you know a certain amount after which you don't pay shipping it's free they don't it doesn't matter if you're paying $90 for an eyeshadow palette, I think it's actually like 80, something like that. Uh, you have to pay shipping on top of that. So for this, it's like $90 for an eyeshadow palette. They are playing it so safe and I think they don't have any reason to. Um, creating this, I think this pre-order process is frustrating for customers because they have to wait two weeks before they get something. They can get frustrated, they can decide to cancel an order. There's a lot of issues that come with not providing a service in the least amount of time, you know? Uh, a lot of buyer remorse that can come up. I think that by now they have enough following, enough orders because they do sell out, sell out to make the next step, which is pre-ordering a bulk amount of products and selling it, or you know, uh, choosing a better deal for delivery and shipping and not making the customer pay for it. That these are the next steps when you're bu building a business I get it you don't want to have a great loss you want to do things with ease you want to make them as easy and as easy for you as it can and I I know that because I have mine like I understand I am a service provider so I understand the consequences and the costs and the fear and everything that comes with it but they I think they have enough on their hands for now to make this a better brand which is more customer friendly the last thing I want to touch upon and uh, after that we're just gonna play with the palette is uh, the use of AI they have been accused of using AI generated art for the palettes um i don't know what to say about that honestly i don't like ai i am specifically working in content marketing so ai has been an issue 
who not for not just for me but for every other business out there that is providing content writing um, services because AI can do that for you and the same happens with art so I don't condone the use of AI I'm not with it but I do understand from a business standpoint again that it's better to pay $20 for a monthly subscription to a AI generating um, picture generating service than paying I don't know hundreds of dollars for the same picture from an artist that makes sense but again I think that they have enough now that they can make the next step and um, not steal art because AI art is basically stealing art they have enough that they can just make it better from cost for customers and that they also are minimizing risks at the same time because I honestly do not believe that at this point in time they would be losing money because they these are not cheap you know these are not cheap and they are selling out which means people are, are buying them so this is my rant and a bit of my experience with the brand okay so we've talked enough let's get into the palette um, this is a cold moon palette it has 21 color press pigments uh, with duochromes and what really caught my eye about this is the color story and I think that the multichromes are actually pretty uh, affordable in a sense that um, I usually go for neutrals but these are not shades that make me go huh, I don't want to put that on my eyes I don't want to have it on my eyes all day I think like these are this is a nice curation of a shade range yeah I can't wait to play with this let's get into some swatches one thing I have to note is that these shimmers like you barely touch them and like this is enough for two eyes so that's good means you will not run out of them soon enough you can see how pigmented they are this is the first shade it's called a snowdrop it goes from a greenish mint to um, orangey pink shift it's beautiful then we have winter rose which is a movie rosy pink Aurora is the next one I have already played with this it's the only one I put on my eyes it's in one of my reels, my recent reels, it's called the uh, Wilted Rose Valentine's Makeup Look. It looks pink here, but it's it's also green and gold. Then we have Orizia. I, another thing I wanted to mention, my when I showed this to my boyfriend, he pointed out that he thinks that the shade names are also probably AI generated. I don't know. <laughs> um, hope not, I mean. Uh, then we have Snow Fairies, this is like a baby pink, baby blue type of shade. Garnet is a brown, this is like a, a reddish brown. Then we have Forbidding, which is not a multichrome, it's just a metallic movie pink. This is super super pigmented. I mean, I don't have enough space on my arm for all these watches. Let's see. You will have to see my cat scratches at some point. Mauja, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's a bone shade, so you're not seeing this. Then we have Saturnalia. I think this is one of my favorite shades from the palette. It, it's purple and it goes... You're not seeing sh Oh, because I washed it. Like a dummy has washed it on the bone shade. Because I could not see it. Uh, let me try to make... This is a lot of holographic shimmer in it and it goes from pink to green yeah you're never gonna see the shift maybe yes this is saturnalia see it's pink then it's golden yeah you can see blue it looks blue here in the middle in the mirror yep that's the best i can do then we have cat mint again i don't know that what that is it's another movie this is more purpley and cool tone we have Kion. this is full very full of hollow glitter this is like blue with yes you can see the shift here blue and it turns pink next up is transformation it looks like a grayish brown then we have wolf moon this is not a duochrome but it's a silver metallic silver and it almost seems like it has a brown base then we have mother's night which is a deep cooler brown last row we have snow crystal which looks green here i don't know guys i swear to you this is extremely blue to me and then we have 
Cold Moon, which is the name of the palette. This looks like a bluish gray. This one here. Then we have Borealis, which is like a khaki pink to green. Then we have Winter Solstice, which is a minty uh, grayish shade. You can see here it's very minty. I don't have space anymore, so I will do this here on my hand. We have Calicanzaros. I don't know what that is. It looks like another... Yes, it's another silver. Oh, it seems like it has some... Yeah, it has some blue in it. That's pretty. Then we have Rebirth, which is a taupey dark gray and then the last one is storm fairy which reminds me of wings club and this is a blue purple green yeah it's very hard to capture these shades <laughs> one thing to note is that a few of these do stain i think um the bluish ones and the reddish ones you can see the red one is still a bit here and my arm is now holographic i mean it looks cool <laughs> At least it looks cool. Oh, actually, I was forgetting. I also got a single shadow. Yeah, this is the shade Moonlit Frost. This is supposedly like a um, brownish shimmer which turns blue in some lights. But uh, yeah, I have to be honest, I haven't seen the blue yet. And I, I tried. If I can get it out, please. And yeah, this is seems very neutral, which is why I got it in the first place. Uh, actually, it looks a bit purple, a bit pink under these lights. Oh, uh, wow. Okay, so it looks pink to me in this light, but it has some bluish pinpoints. Yeah, I think you can see the shift. So I got this because it's neutral. It has a neutral base and I think, sorry. That was my feet. Uh, I think it will be interesting to have something more neutral, but also very interesting on your eyes. I'm gonna do just one look today because I am going to the grocery store in a few hours. And I don't want to take my makeup off just to redo it all over again. This is not the most flattering angle, but this will have to do. I have a bit of foundation on my eyes, so I don't have a primer. I am honestly don't know if these shades need um, like a glitter base. I don't know. I'm going in with... Um, <laughs> so I will use... Oh my god. <laughs> so much choice. Transformation, which is this taupey taupey shade taupey brown and there is some kick up in the pen so these shades are usually very difficult to formulate they can go patchy and muddy very quickly so i'm picking up just barely some pigment and i'm blending it i got my, this palette when it launched i think it was the 26th of november i don't know where you live but where i live the 26th is still christmas like we celebrate 20 the 26th as we celebrate christmas it's an important day and at 9 p.m on the 26th i was there waiting for the release so something i noticed is these pens are removable like you can see there's this hole here but the single shades are round so you cannot actually put one of these in so i'm not sure maybe you can swap them around if you also have the other one they have like the harvest moon i think it's called you can create your own and maybe in the future they will have more options for this as well which is pretty cool so now that i've done that i done that i did that i want to add some catmint is this movie shade this isn't the most wow formula i've tried but honestly i think that if you get this it's mainly mostly for the sparkle yeah but i do think that the color story really is creative i haven't seen anything like this on the market so far which is why i picked it up in the first place i'm going to pick up um a slow a smaller brush first of all this mother's night brown and i'm using it to create some shadows here in the other corner this is much grayer than it looks in the pan it looks gray mixed with the other shades i am also lining my lash line a bit with this but this is all that i'm gonna do for now i am gonna use it later on to line my eyes for a uh, eyeliner i want to pick two shimmers to use which ones can go together very well 
Hmm. Saturnalia because it's my favorite. And then um snow fairies. So I'm gonna pick up Saturnalia. Again, you don't need a lot, like this is enough for both eyes. I'm gonna place it here. Can you see how pigmented that is? I don't think you can. So this I'm gonna use in the other part of my eyelid. Oh, it's so beautiful. Do you see the shift on my eyes? Oh my god, I'm obsessed. <laughs> is this my like my multichrome era? And what I like about these is that the holo glitter is actually like you can see it. I have another palette that has hollows and you cannot really see them. They just look silver on the eyes. Well this is very three-dimensional. So that is Saturnalia. I'm sorry, you cannot see how beautiful this is. And then I'm gonna pick up Snow Fairies and just use it to fill my eyelid here. Oh my god. Honestly, if you go out with these shades and uh, I, I keep in mind, I uh, this is not a critique. This is just me thinking because it's the first time that I use this type of shades. I think, and I have some fallout by the way. But yeah, if you use these shades, I don't think anyone can not not look at your eyes. I, I think they just can't. They're just compelled to do so. Um, I'm gonna do good on my promise. I'm gonna use a highliner brush and line my eyes with that Mother's Night shade. And I'm just gonna put the same shades I used on my, on my lid on my lower lash line. I added mascara and some black eyeliner. And um, one last thing I wanna do, yes, it will probably make me look like a walking rainbow, but I honestly don't care. I wanna use like something like, yes, this Storm Fairy. I wanna put it on my lower lash line. I'm picking it up on a brush, so we'll see how it behaves my mascara is smudging everywhere gotta love that um anyways so this finding ferdinand mascara it stays wet i i can't stand that um but it also makes my lashes look good so i like that i have to deal with wet lashes it means if i do this they stick together a bit so um normally generally no i would not recommend the mas this mascara but i have it and I, i'm gonna use it it's working it's just that the mascara is just trying to stick to my brush so this is the finished look i think that it looks amazing and uh yeah you can see a bit of the shifts but honestly not so much as you were here under these lights especially but uh, i really like how the look came out it was just adding some more blush because you can't have enough guys this is the finished look i hope you like it and uh i do i i i kind of i kind of like it a lot i think it's very attention grabbing i do wear glasses though so it, it will be taken down a notch uh, a bit by the glasses but overall this is my first impressions on the cold moon palette and a bit on Ensley Rain. In general if you followed along for the whole video I really like this palette. Was it worth like $90? I think it was 100 and 100 with this together. Listen I'm not the best with um, multi-chromes. I don't have a lot of knowledge on this so I will refrain from comparing this. Can you have the same formulas and the same type of sparkles somewhere else? Probably yes. But for me in my situation in this moment, at this moment in time, yes. I feel like I'm really loving this and I will use this a lot and it's very unique in my collection so I, I, will, I am happy to have paid for this. Let me know in the comments what you think about the palette and uh yeah i don't know if you want to start a discussion about the brand i'm not sure i'm that committed to it but feel free to write whatever you want in the comments <laughs> this is a free democracy is free democracy a thing freedom anyways i hope you consider subscribing i do love makeup a lot and i um try my best to come up with content on a daily basis and yeah hopefully i will see you in the next one thank you for coming along with me for this journey and have a great one Bye!